Most of us have English language learners in our classroom, and you might be wondering, how can I assess what they know about the content without language becoming a barrier? Most of the materials I'll show you today to do this are provided by WIDA, and you can find them for free at www.wida.us. What is WIDA? WIDA stands for World Class Instructional Design and Assessment. WIDA is a group that provides a framework and resources to help us design appropriate instruction and assessment for ELLs. Since Kentucky is part of the WIDA consortium, you as a Kentucky teacher have access to all of their resources and helpful tips. If you're going to plan your assessments correctly for your English language learners, the first thing you need to know is, what is the WAP score or the ACCESS score of the English language learner I'm considering? These tests give us an idea of what the student can do in the areas of reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So the first step is to find out what is the WAP score if the student is very new, and what is the ACCESS score if they've been here for longer than a year. These are the scores that ESL teachers use to create the student's program service plan. So the other thing you want to consider is, what is my student's program service plan? That will help you know what accommodations or modifications need to be made on any assessment. Okay, let's use WIDA resources now to plan instruction and assessment. Step one, know the WAPT or ACCESS score of your student. Here's a copy of a printout that you receive from ACCESS testing results. Along the right side, you'll see the proficiency level for each area, listening, speaking, reading, writing. Then there are some combined areas. Oral language you'll see is a com combination of listening and speaking. Literacy score will be a combination of reading and writing. And comprehension score is going to be a combination of reading and listening. The overall composite score is kind of like an average. You want to be careful to not only look at the composite score because you'll notice that this student has a composite score of 3.6, but is fairly high in oral language and really high in speaking. So when you're considering how the language is going to be used on the assessment, whether you're going to be asking the student to speak or write or listen or read, you want to look at the individual proficiency levels for each task when you begin to modify. Okay, now you know the ACCESS score, let's figure out what that means. I like to first look at the WIDA performance definitions because it's a quick, easy guide for me to see from 1 to 6 a general description of what the student can do with language in that area. So remember, you may have a student that scores very high in the area of speaking, as our example, but may score lower in an area of reading or writing or vice versa. So you're going to look at different areas for each of the domains, reading, writing, speaking, or listening, when you begin to understand what your student can do and should be expected to accomplish in the regular classroom. Okay, so now you know the student's access score and you have a general idea of what those scores mean. Let's start planning. As you plan your unit or your lesson, begin with the assessment first. If you plan out the assessment first, then you have a real strong idea of what you want the children to do with the content and how you expect them to perform. By starting with the end in mind, you'll be especially careful to keep notice of academic language, which can be a real barrier for ELL students. You'll also be able to think about the ELP standards. That means how are you going to be using language within the classroom within this unit? By thinking about these things first, you'll be better equipped to support the English language learners throughout the unit so that when the assessment time comes, they're prepared. As you begin to develop tasks for your assessment, a good place to look for modification ideas are the can-do descriptors for your grade level cluster. This will give you ideas of what your learner could be expected to do based on their given proficiency in the area of speaking or listening, reading or writing. For example, if the class task is to give a content-based presentation using technical vocabulary, you could best look at the chart for the level of student who you're trying to modify for. Let's say the student is at speaking level 2. Looking at the chart for speaking level 2, I can get some ideas of how I can modify this assignment for the particular learner. 
For example, I could allow this learner to use pictures, objects, or even short phrases and sentences to support their project so they're still demonstrating content knowledge in a way that meets their language needs. Another great resource to look for modification examples are the amplified standards produced by WIDA. The amplified standards take objectives from Common Core and show you how a task within that objective might be modified for students at different levels of English language proficiency. For example, in the area of reading, a student who might have scored a 5 could be expected to compare and contrast narrative points of view, while a student who has an access score in reading of 1 might only be asked to identify narrative points of view. So you can see they're still asked to master the same content, but are displaying that content knowledge in a slightly varied way to meet their language needs. Notice also at the bottom that amplified standards have key lists of words that might pose difficulty for English language learners. So you can look at those lists and tackle those vocabulary words from the get-go of the unit. While the amplified standards aren't a complete list of all the common core, or all the objectives, they give you great ideas of how you might modify similar lessons based on the language. Now that you've modified your assessment using the amplified standards and based upon the student's English language proficiency scores, you're ready to give your assessment. Make sure that your student doesn't qualify for any additional accommodations. You can find these in the program service plan. They might include things like extended time, simplified language, or a bilingual or English glossary. After the assessment, don't forget to take time to consider the results. Think critically about whether language may have affected the outcome and what necessary changes might need to be made in the future to your assessments. Share the results with stakeholders, team teachers, ESL personnel, parents, and most importantly, the student. Interaction and meaningful feedback is powerful instruction for English language learners. Celebrate their growth and celebrate your success too in modification. Now you're ready to plan your next instructional unit.